Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jack. I'm the founder here at Cenarius. We're an e-commerce growth agency that helps e-commerce brands scale. If you want to learn more about us and how we help e-commerce brands scale, I'm going to leave the relevant links in the description. In this week's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my exact Facebook ads dashboard and what metrics I track inside the ad account to help me make decisions on how to improve performance overall. This can be extremely helpful for you in terms of understanding what metrics you need to be looking at and how that can help you improve your performance with your Facebook ads. So what I'm going to walk you through is my exact um, dashboard setup and why I choose to track those metrics. This has come over um, you know, more than two years of experience in running Facebook ads and understanding what metrics actually correlate to performance. So this can be extremely, extremely helpful for you when you're setting up your own ad account to understand what metrics you need to be looking at when you're making decisions. So just for starters, when you want to actually customize the dashboard, what you can do here is click on your columns section right here. And as you can see here, you have some kind of pre-made presets that Facebook gives you um, for different objectives. And then you can customize your own columns right here, add different metrics and change around the order in this section right here. So what I'm going to be walking you through is again, the metrics that I have and why I track all of those metrics. Now, the first thing is obviously here, the standard metrics that you have, which are on and off, whether the campaign is on and off the ad slash campaign slash ad set name, and then the delivery. So the delivery is just going to tell me what ads are running at the moment, what ads are off, etc. After that, I have the budget. This just at a quick glance gives me what the budget is when we're scaling the campaign, when we're scaling it down, this can give me a very quick overview view of that. Now what we have next here is the way I like to set up my ad account and this is going to differ from per person to person is I like to set it up in the same way that you can imagine a funnel will look like in terms of the number of people you're actually reaching with your campaigns, the number of impressions, how many of people, how many um, of those people end up clicking on your ad and then how many of those people add to cart check out, uh, initiate checkout and then purchase. So that gives you kind of an overview of how people are dropping off. And I'm going to walk you through some even more advanced metrics later on to show you how I keep track of the overall conversion rate and the funnel that we have. Okay. So reach, Reach is going to be the number of people that you, your ad is reaching. Again, um, why the reason we're tracking reach and impressions here is this gives us a very, very quick kind of idea of what the frequency is. So for those who don't know, the difference between the, the reach, which is the number of people who saw your ad and the impression, which is the number of times your ads were on screen, is that if the reach was like 6,000 and your impressions were was 12,000, that means every single person in that audience saw that ad twice. So that's kind of the difference between the reach and impressions. Then we have outbound clicks. Now, the reason I have outbound clicks here, as opposed to, for example, you'll see a lot of people use link clicks is simply um, outbound clicks specifically refer refers to the number of clicks that take people off Facebook owned properties. So I want to I want to see how many people are actually clicking on the call to action, which is usually shop now or, or, or something along those lines. Um, after that, we have landing page views. So you might also ask if we're tracking the outbound clicks, so the, the number of the number of clicks on the call to action, why are we actually tracking the landing page views? So the landing page views is the number of times a person clicked on an ad link, then successfully loaded the destination web page. So the difference between those is if you have a very slow um, website, what you'll find is you're going to have pretty good outbound clicks, but the landing page views are going to be significantly lower. And you can see this here in this first ad. If you, if you look closely, you can see that we had 430 outbound clicks and only 320 landing page views. This gives us a landing page view rate of around 80%, which is a metric we also track. I'll show you that later, uh, but that's pretty healthy. You're going to get 20%. 20% of people who click on the ad who don't wait for the um, website to load. But again, improving your website load speed by, you know, optimizing for conversion and removing any useless code that you have on your website, any apps that slow it down um, is going to improve that significantly and can improve your overall conversion rate further down the line. Okay. So after that, we've tracked the number of people we've reached, how many times the, the ad was shown on screen, how many people actually ended up clicking, how many people actually loaded the website. And then we want to see how many people actually add to cart. After that, we want to see how many people, uh, initiated checkouts. Now, one thing you'll notice here is I'm, I'm, uh, tracking total metrics and 
If you're unaware, there are two different types of metrics that you'll find within Facebook ads. There's total metrics and there are unique metrics. Um, the difference is add to carts is just the total number of people who've added to cart. Unique add to carts is how many unique users added to cart. So that's there's a slight variation there, but post iOS 14, um, Facebook actually no longer supports unique add to carts, checkouts, initiated, and purchases. So we just track the overall metrics. This is just for some, just for kind of your general information and to know if you're wondering why we track total metrics as opposed to unique metrics. Okay, so after that, we are tracking the amount spent and then the purchase conversion value. So this just gives us a very, very quick. Um, overview when I log into the ad account of how much we've spent and how much money we've made from that ad. Very quick overview on the performance followed by the ROAS which is calculated from those two numbers. After that, I actually like to track the average order value. So this is actually a custom metric that we've created within the Facebook ads. And again, if you're unaware, you can create custom metrics that you calculate yourself based on the kind of preliminary metrics that Facebook gives you in the ad account. So you can see here, um, this is the purchase conversion value divided by the number of purchases gives us kind of the average order value. We just like to keep track of that because it also uh, helps us understand if you know, the average order values along the lines of what we know. For example, if there's an ad that seems to be perf not, not performing as well, but then we notice that the average order value is very, very low on that ad for, for any number of reasons. It could be that the ad is performing really well. It just so happens that those people are choosing to buy one or two products from our store instead of kind of higher valued products or a higher average order value. So this is the reason why we track this. Just very quickly to show you how you can create custom metrics. If you again click on this column section and you click on customize columns, you can actually click on custom metrics here, create custom metric, and you'll be able to enter uh, different formulas based on the, again, preliminary metrics that Facebook gives you, and that will show up in your ad account and calculate automatically. Okay, next we have the cost per landing page view. So. The reason I've structured this like this, so again, we have the entire funnel here, so landing page views, add to carts, checkouts, initiated, and purchases. Now we want to understand the funnel in terms of cost. So cost per landing page view, cost per add to cart, cost per checkout initiated, and cost per purchase. So these are the metrics that we usually look at when we're addressing or assessing, let's say, the performance of an ad. Um, and if you do any sort of correlation study and understand what metrics are actually contributing to performance, the earliest contributor to performance from an ad is usually the cost per ad to cart. So this is, these are the metrics that we're looking at, the cost per purchase, cost per checkout initiated, and cost per ad to cart. So for example, if an ad is not performing as well, where the cost per purchase is quite high, but we're still getting a pretty good cost per checkout initiated and a cost per add to cart. It might be a good idea to continue running that ad uh, for one or two more days to see if performance improves over that time period. Um, next, we have the cost per unique outbound click. Again, this is a unique metric, so the average cost for each person to click on the, uh, click, uh, the link, uh, the call to action. Again, this, we never really optimize for this metric. This is just kind of an indication for us on the creative end of things, how that's performing. This is the same for the unique link, link click through rate. So again, this is the percentage of people who saw your ad and performed a link click. So this is kind of an indication of the performance of the creative. And what's great about these metrics is they're on platform metrics, which means they have not been affected by the, by the iOS 14 update. So you still get very, very accurate data. Um, not so much so with the cost per checkout and cost per add to cart, you do get some missing data points there as a result of the update. Um, so now we're gonna go into some more advanced stuff and I'll walk you through why we track those metrics and the purpose of those as well. So next we like to track what's known as the landing page view rate. Um, this is also a custom metric, which is the landing page views divided by the amount, the number of link clicks we got. And again, this gives us an understanding of the website load speed and if there's any problems with the landing page. Again, when we look at the outbound clicks to the um, landing page views, this is the exactly exactly the same metric we're tracking. But here it gives us it allows us to view it as a percentage so that we can get a very, very quick um, overview of what that looks like. Again, that's landing page views divided by link clicks. Gives us an idea of the drop off we're getting uh, on the ad side of things. Um, so the next thing that we wanna do is understand the conversion funnel. 
in percentages. So again, how many people added to cart from the people who have landed on the website? So that gives us 20%. And then how many people actually end up initiating checkout from the people who have added to cart? And then how many people have purchased from the people who have initiated checkouts. And what that allows us to do is benchmark some numbers from historical data and compare those numbers with the ads that we're launching more recently to understand if the performance is on par with the target ROAS that we're looking for. And again, it helps us make decisions within the ad account. All of those are custom metrics. Again, you can look at those, uh, you can create them quite easily as I showed you from the custom metric in the columns right here. Uh, next is the overall conversion rate. This is just kind of the website conversion rate. We like to look at what the conversion rate is from Facebook ads and look at the metrics that are coming in from Shopify as well to have those two numbers side by side and compare uh, you know, how, how well the website is converting people from Facebook and more generally overall. Next is the frequency. So the frequency gives you an understanding of how many times on average the people within your audience have seen your ad. Again, we just like to look at that metric. Obviously, we don't optimize for it, especially on retargeting campaigns. You don't want to be blasting your audience. I would say you want to keep your frequency between three to four over the last week when you're ever, whenever you're running uh, retargeting campaigns. So this is also a, a, an important metric to keep your eye on. Next are two metrics that we've added recently that have tremendously helped us understand how well our creative is performing. As you very well know, creative is the number one driver um, in, of performance with your Facebook ads. Um, so we want to understand how well people are interacting with our ads and if there's certain angles that we're testing, are those resonating a little bit better with our audience? And we use two metrics that um, help us understand this. So video hook is a percentage that tells us what percentage of people um, from the impressions that we got actually played the three second the first three seconds of our ad. So this tells us kind of how many people are getting hooked in by our ad. So stop and stop scrolling and actually watch the first three seconds. So this gives us an understanding if we're testing the first three second clips of an ad, how well that's doing and how well that's hooking people in. Next, we have through plays, which is how many people, so, you know, we've kind of established how many people are actually watching the free first three seconds, but we also want to develop an understanding of how many people actually end up watching uh, all the way through, which is kind of 15 seconds, I believe the through plays metrics is. So how many people end up um, playing more than 15 seconds of the ad divided by the impressions? Lastly, we have kind of very standard metrics, the CPMs and the cost per 1,000 people reached. Again, we don't optimize for those metrics, but it's really important to understand um, that Facebook's are, Facebook is giving us good CPMs and if it's not, if there's a problem um, that's causing that. Lastly, we have the attribution setting. Again, always be aware of this. So if you're not aware, there are different attribution settings on Facebook. The one we use is just a seven day click or a one day view. So that gives us kind of the largest amount of people that we can attribute Facebook ads for. Previous to iOS 14, it was one day click and 28 day view, um, sorry, the opposite, um, 28 day click and, and one day view. But this is the attribution setting that we like to stick to. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and found it valuable. Um, you can go ahead now and set up uh, your dashboard exactly how we set it up. Or if you saw certain metrics that you found interesting that you wanna start tracking, you can go ahead and add them in your ad account. If you did find this valuable, be sure to like and subscribe for more content on e-commerce growth. Um, and let us know in the comments if there are any other metrics that we've missed that you like to track that help you keep tabs on your Facebook ads and improve overall performance. Uh, hope you enjoyed it again and we'll see you guys in the next one.